to host your website out on the internet, most companies are going to charge you around $12 a month. You can cut that almost in half though if you host your website on Google Cloud. That's with all the bells and whistles and I realize that using Google Cloud is a lot more complicated than some of the other services, but if you follow this video, we're going to walk through everything to the point where at the end of it, you'll have your website hosted on Google Cloud with its own dedicated IP address, custom domain pointing to that IP, HTTP to HTTPS redirect, and what you're going to need to get started is of course a website itself, a domain and an account on Google Cloud. The website itself is just that folder of files, HTML, JavaScript, images. For the domain name that you'll use, you can register that on GoDaddy or any other registration company. It really doesn't matter. And then you need that Google Cloud account set up. I have videos showing how to set that up. When you got those three things though, you can head over to Google Cloud. It is cloud.google.com. And then once you're on the website, up at the top right, you want to go to console. This is the dashboard for using Google Cloud. At the top of the console, there is a search bar. We're looking for cloud storage, and that's one of the commonly used services, so it's right there suggested. And then here on cloud storage, we create a bucket. The bucket needs a name, and it needs to be the exact domain name that we just registered. So for this demo, I'm using forall.com. It needs to match that domain. Hit continue. For region, one single region is more than enough to start out with. Storage class, I like to use auto class. And uncheck that box to enforce public access prevention. What that's saying is you don't want the public to reach your storage bucket. That's not true for us. We want all of the public to reach our bucket and see our website. So uncheck that box. Your access control, keep it at uniform. There's a data protection area, but you don't need to change anything here. You just need to go down and create that storage bucket. When we try though, it's going to recognize that we're using a domain name as the bucket name, and it's going to make us prove that we own that domain name. So when you get this error message, go back up to the name your bucket section. It was the very top section on the create a bucket wizard. And there's a little gray information box underneath the field with a link. Hit that link here. It takes you to an information page. Scroll halfway down and there'll be a button for opening search console. This is gonna be the Google search console. And up on the top left, there's a drop down with each domain that you own. So click on that drop down, go down to add property, and the property you want to add is a domain. So here's where you type in your domain. For me, it's forall.com, and then hit continue. Google recognizes here in the search console that GoDaddy has the registration for the domain. So it takes me to GoDaddy on GoDaddy, and this would be the same if you use a different registration company. You can connect. That will then pull in your authentication to Search Console. Once it recognizes ownership is verified, this new domain becomes one of my properties on Search Console. Now from there, I can go back to Google Cloud. There's nothing else I need to do on the page, but go down to Create and hit Create which creates that bucket with my domain name. Now inside the bucket here, there's an upload folder button, but I can't simply hit that and upload my entire website folder. Really the cloud storage bucket is my website folder on Google Cloud. So I can't upload the website folder that I have locally. I have to go to upload files, go inside of my website folder and then select all the loose files at the top level of that website folder. I click open and that will upload any loose files. For me, that's just the main page of my website, index.html. But after that, I can click upload folder and upload any subfolders 
that my website has. For me, it's just an image folder, but I can upload multiple and this will upload both the folders, subfolders, and everything inside of them to my Google Cloud storage bucket. Now go back to my list of buckets, just one bucket here. And on the far right of that bucket listing, there's three dots. Click that and then go up to click edit website configuration. What this is doing is saying, if anybody comes to the bucket, where do you want them to go first? And we're saying we want them to land on the home page, which I'm using defaults here where index.html is my home page. So I enter index.html. I don't need to worry about an error page at this point. So I'm gonna leave that empty and click save. Now there's one thing we're gonna have to do before this all works is make this bucket public so anybody can access it. Here where the bucket is listed, public access shows this bucket is not public. So click on the bucket that we just created a minute ago, go up to permissions tab, and it's showing us that public access is not public. So we have to go down and hit grant access. And in the pop-up, the new principle is all users. This means everyone. And the role that they have to view the website is under cloud storage all the way down as cloud object viewer. And when you add that role, Google Cloud Console here cautions you that this is going to make your bucket public and anybody can look at it. We click yes on that because we want people to be able to access this bucket. Now up at the top of the console page in the search bar, search for load balancing. We're gonna put a load balancer in front of our storage bucket. When I try to do that, it tells me that data could not be loaded. So I can hit continue on that error message and it brings me to what's called the Compute Engine API. Load balancing is billed under Google's Compute Engine or VM service, but the API has to be enabled. And that just means that you're telling Google that you will be using this service and that you can be billed for it. So I enable that API in order to use a load balancer. And then here on the load balancer page, click create load balancer. The type of load balancer is application. It is public facing, click next. It is a global load balancer. So click next after that. And then there's two generations. The New generation does not have HTTP to HTTPS redirect. So go over and click the classic application load balancer. Click next and click configure. Now it brings you to a page where you'll be configuring your load balancer. And it has a lot of parts that you have to give names to. I always give some form of the website name, dash a description of what part that is. So for the load balancer name, I'll just call it RAL-LB for load balancer. These load balancers have front ends. So I'm gonna name the first one RAL-FRONT. And that first front end is going to have a protocol of HTTP. And the IP address can be ephemeral. That just means that it's a temporary IP address. You'll use whatever Google has handy and they won't charge you extra for that IP address. But after I click done on this load balancer front end, I want to add a second load balancer front end for HTTPS. That is a secure protocol for websites. I'll name it raw front HTTPS. I set the protocol to HTTPS, and then this time for the IP address, we'll create IP. I'll name this, so I give it a name and hit reserve. To use that, you have to use a cert. So hit you know, under the dropdown, create new certificate, give this a name, and then select create Google managed certificate. The domain underneath is going to be the domain you just reserved. So create this cert. And then underneath is the important part, you want to enable HTTP to HTTPS redirect. Now, after we've made those two front ends for the load balancer, 
The next section is backend configuration. So click the box and then click create a backend bucket. Got to give this bucket a name. And then right underneath, there's a place where you can browse and select the cloud storage bucket that you just created. Once you've done that underneath, by default, enable cloud CDN is selected. I would unselect that. Cloud CDN just stores copies of your website in different parts of the world and makes it faster. It does cost more though, so I unselect it just for the start of a website like this. Now that we have a backend configured, we can create the load balancer. It takes a minute to build, and once it builds, there should be those two front ends. On our load balancer page, we want to copy the IP address of our HTTPS front end. So copy that IP, and then go to wherever you registered your domain name. For me, that's GoDaddy. Go into where your domain is listed, and look for a place that says DNS. Once you're in DNS settings for your domain, we're just gonna go over to DNS records, at least on GoDaddy, and usually for a new domain, there is an A record that says parked. This means it's not in use right now. We want to delete that record. Once we delete that parked A record, we want to create a new record. Here it's add new record. The type is A, the name is at, and the value is that IP address of our load balancer that we copied from Google Cloud. So save that in here. The time to live or TTL should be the lowest it allows you here half an hour and create that. Now everything's set up. If I put that IP address or my new domain name into my web browser, nothing happens. And that doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just takes about an hour or so, sometimes a lot more for your domain name to be associated with your website, wherever it's hosted. So we'll give that some time. That's about an hour later. I refresh my website domain and it's coming up. Everything is working just fine. If you have any problems setting this up, please do drop them below. I like looking at this stuff and I'd be happy to help.